50 Terran standard years ago, a crack commando unit was sent into the Galadoc for a crime they did not commit. They remain stuck in the Space Hulk to this day. Still looking for employment wherever they can find it, they survive the Soldiers of Fortune. If you need a kill team and no one else can help, and if you can pay them, maybe you can hire the Croot. In this video, I'll be painting a kill broker for the Farstalker King. I'll be including the paints I used in the description below. So with nothing more to be said, grab your brushes, round up your paints, and bring a flash as we head once more into the dark. I undercoated the model, first in Chaos Black, then from above with Corax White. This means that we still have some nice dark places in the shadows, but at the same time have a much brighter colour to start the base coats from. We're going to base coat the skin in Deathworld Forest, and the belly in a one-to-one -one mix of Deathworld Forest and Ogryn Camo, just to add a little bit of variation. We're then going to use an all over wash of Athonian camo shade, watching it whilst it's drying to make sure it's not pooling in any one area. We're then going to layer back up with the same colours we used previously for the base coating, making sure to leave some of the shaded skin in the recesses. We're going to start highlighting now by layering the more prominent areas of the skin such as the muscle groups, hands, knees, whatever really you feel needs a highlight, and we're going to be using Death Guard Green for the skin and Ogryn Camo for the belly. For the next step, we're going to be using Druchi Violet to add some definition to the skin and body. So we're going to be running it into kind of crevices and folds in the skin, areas between the fingers and muscle, any joints to add some shading to the model. We'll then be building on this with a glaze of Majos purple, focused on areas like scars, knuckles and elbows, just to add a bit of colour. Back to highlighting now, we're going to use Ogryn Camo for the body and Greek Khaki for the belly. We're focusing this on the sharper points of the model, so lines on the elbows and knees, knuckles, fingers, and any really sharp points around the quills that you find around the body. After applying those highlights, you might find they look a little stark on the skin, and what we're going to do to rectify that is take the colours we just used, dilute them somewhat with Lamy and Medium, and then glaze over the highlights we just established. This is to help soften them a bit and really blend them into the skin. We're then going to finish these areas with dot highlights of Ogryn Camo for the skin and Creed Khaki for the belly. Only really focuses on the sharpest points of detail, so for example the knuckles, areas around the face such as the eyes, and the knees and elbows. We're now going to be painting the claws and quills, which is a word I learnt whilst editing this video, so uh, thank you Google. And we're going to be base coating them with Rhinox Hide, making sure not to go over any of the skin we just painted. Next up, we'll be layering with Steel Legion Drab, covering almost the entirety of the area we just base coated, but leaving a little Rhinox Hide at the very base of the claws and quills. We're then going to highlight these areas, painting Xandri Dust along the sharper edges of the claws and towards the end of the quills. We then finish up by placing a dot highlight of Ushabti Bone at the end of both Quill and Claw. The most important thing to remember when painting the skin is to keep layers thin and slightly diluted. It's perfectly okay to build up the colour in a few layers rather than to slap it on in one very thick layer. We want to be focusing the sharper highlights on the sharper areas of the model, such as the knuckles and fingers, and the softer highlights on the softer areas, such as the muscles. 
To add some visual interest, I wanted the cloak to be darker on the inside than on the outside. And with that in mind, for the inside of the cape, I went with a base coat of 5050 Abaddon Black and Corn Red, whilst the outer cape is purely Corn Red. Both sides of the cloak now get a wash of non oil, and it's really important here that, as with the previous wash, we watch it to make sure it isn't pooling too much in any one area, as we're trying to keep the cloak as smooth as possible. These next three steps are all focused on the outside of the cloak, and it's going to be a mix between glazing and layering. I say a mix because it's not quite as light to touch as a glaze, but it's also not quite as heavy as a full layer. We're going to be transitioning from corn red to mephiston red with a 50-50 mix in between, and we're going to be applying this kind of as again a glaze slash layer on any of the raised areas of the cloak, letting the shape and folds of the cloak dictate where we're placing these highlights. Now that we've got a nice transition, we're going to be focusing on the edges and folds of the cloaks, highlighting the outer with Wild Rider Red and the inside with Corn Red. Steady your hands here and use the edge of the brush wherever possible. We're trying to keep these lines nice and thin. We then finish the cloak with dot highlights on both sides, Jacaro on the outside and Wild Rider Red on the inside. I was really pleased with how the cloak turned out in the end, and I think the trick was keeping it, you know, multiple layers nice and thin, as is often the case in painting. If you're unsure where to place your highlights, let the cloak dictate where you're going to put them, following the folds and the, the raised edges and so on. Take your time with it, and I'm sure you'll be pleased with the result. We're moving back to the face now, a lot of which will actually already be painted because of the skin section we did earlier. Eyes are quite fiddly to record, so I apologise for the uh, shaky nature of this footage, but they're actually quite simple. I started out by blacking the entire eye with black. I then layered up with Orthwan Grey and finished with a bit more of a dot of white scar towards the centre. Onto the beak now, and we're going to be layering from initially Deathworld Forest and moving towards pure Rhinox Hide. So, I did about four layers of this, mixing more and more Rhinoxide gradually in with the Deathworld Forest. I then finished with pure Rhinoxide at the very centre of the beak, as this is where we want it to be darkest. To help blend the beak together smoothly, I then used a wash of Agrax Earthshade, pulling it towards the centre of the beak. Once the wash is completely dry, I highlighted the sharpest edge of the beak with a Bane Blade Brown, keeping it nice and thin. And to finish the beak, it's a simple dot of Ushabti Bone on the most pointy areas. Moving on to the hair quills now, starting from a black base coat, we're going to layer up with Rhinox Hide, covering the entirety of the quill itself whilst leaving some of that black in the shadows. The hair is then going to receive three successive highlights, starting with Doombo Brown, then Mournfang Brown, and finally Scrag Brown. We want each of these highlights to cover successively less of the quill. So for the Doomball it's about two thirds, Mournfang it's about half, and for the Scrag it's about the final third end of the quill. Then we're going to finish the quills, as I so often do, with a dot highlight. In this case it's a 50-50 mix of Scrag Brown to a Shabti Bone, and this is going to be placed at the very ends of the quills, and as a small point next to any jewellery, just to add a bit of definition. So a couple of notes when painting faces, I often find it easier to paint the eye itself before the surrounding eyebrow and eye bags and so on, just because if you mess up it's a lot easier to correct that before than after you've painted the entirety of the face. I also realised when editing this that um, quite a lot of these techniques don't really show that well on this model as he's wearing a mask. Not sure why. But uh, I used here some of the photos of uh, the test crude I was painting 
and I thought it might be useful to mention that if your crew happens to have their tongue out, I painted that in purple using Xerius purple, then highlighting with Screamer pink and pink horror successively. This Kroot kill broker is finely garbed in no less than three different colours of leather. The first of which we're going to be base coating in Rhinox Hide, the second a bad and black, and finally Steel Legion Drab. We're then going to wash any of the leather we painted in Rhinox Hide and Steel Legion Drab with Agrax Earthshade. Once again, trying to make sure that this doesn't wash over onto any of the skin or other areas we've painted. All three areas of leather are now going to get three highlights, uh, which are going to be different, as you'd expect, depending on the colour of the leather. The Rhinox Hide leather receives a highlight first of Gawthorn Brown, then a smaller highlight of Baneblade Brown, and finishing with a dot of White Scar on the very sharpest points. The black leather receives an edge highlight of Scaven Blight Dinge, then Dawnstone, and finishing with a dot of Administratum Grey. With all the leather, it's important to remember that if you aren't happy with how sharp the line has come out, you can just go back in with the base colour we used earlier and neaten it up a bit. The lightest brown leather is now highlighted with Sandry Dust, then Ushabdi Bone, and a final dot of Screaming Skull. It's also a good point to mention that the mask this kill broker is wearing was also painted in the leather and I used the darkest leather of Rhinox Hide and the lighter brown leather of the Steel Legion Drab to create a kind of split mask. With the leather there's really no wrong way to pick which parts you want to be which colour. In fact you could do it all of one colour if you want or you know whatever mix you want to choose. It's worth mentioning that the stitching that holds a lot of the pieces together was painted in the same way as the lighter brown leather, just with slightly more generous highlights. A lot of the Kroot have bits of bone scattered around the models, sometimes as trophies perhaps, and potentially snacks. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure which, but on this model you'll see it on the skull he has on his hip and the handle of his machete, which is bone. We're going to start these areas by base coating in Rakarth Flesh and then layering up with Pallid Witch Flesh, leaving the Rakarth showing in the dark areas such as the eye sockets. We're then going to dilute some Agrax Earthshade in about a 50-50 mix with Larmian Medium and wash the bone. As always, very important to make sure that it's not shading too heavily in any one area as it's going to ruin the effect we're going for. We're then going to layer back up with Pallid Witch Flesh on the areas like the cheekbones, forehead, or knobbly bits <laughs> on the end of the bone, uh, and finish it with a dot highlight of White Scar on the sharpest points. If I were to paint a few more of the Kroot, I would actually try and do the bone in a few different colours. Obviously on this model I kept it quite simple, but if I was to do the entire squad, I'd probably try and do some of the bone in a bit more of a mouldering yellow, with Sandry Dust and Ushabti Bone. The cord holding the skull to his belt was painted in the same way as the Rhinox Hide leather, again just focused with a bit more of the highlights, and the handle on his machete was painted in the same way as the black leather. I chose to paint the Pulse Rifle on the model in the colours of the Violora Sept, not only because it's like that on the box art, but also because apparently I hate myself. It took me quite a few coats to get um, a solid base coat with the Pallid Witch Flesh, however there is only one of these in the unit, so stay patient and keep at it. We're then going to shade all the panel lining on the model with Diluted Bane Blade Brown. It's okay to spill over the edges here, I did quite a few times, just go back once it's dry and tidy it up with Pallid Witch Flesh. We're then going to move on to the stock of the weapon, which is actually painted in the exact same way as the black leather, so starting with Abaddon Black, then moving through Scaven Blight Dinge, Dawnstone, and finishing with a dot of Administratum Grey. I feel like Kroot wouldn't take the absolute best care of their equipment, so I decided to go for a bit more of a flaky, shaky highlight of White Scar here, a bit more chipped and pitted, 
And what I mean by that is, rather than a smooth edge highlight, we want it to be kind of in and out and add some extra scratches and dinks over the weapon casing. To build on this chipping effect, we're going to be taking some Rhinox hide and painting that into the center of these white highlights to really reinforce the scratching and beaten up nature of this weapon. The red lens on the pulse rifle was painted first with corn red, then a layer of Mephiston red, a highlight of Wild Rider red, and a final dot at each side with Jacaro orange. The gun isn't completely finished at this stage, as we still have the metallics yet to do, but you'll notice that the cord on the gun has been painted in the same way as the dark brown leather, and as previously mentioned, the stock was painted in the same way as the black leather. I find when painting models like this, you could go crazy with a ton of different colours, but not only is it easier to use less paint, it also helps unify the model as one cohesive piece. To start the metallics, we're going to be base coating any area that we want to be bronze or gold with Rhinox hide, so things like rings and bangles on the model. We'll then be layering the same areas in Balthazar gold and layering any areas we want to be in a steel or iron in either lead belcher or iron warriors. Some of the bits and pieces we've just painted, we might want to be jewellery, as the crew do have a surprising amount of that on them. So we're going to be layering any areas we want to be a shinier gold with Retributor armour, and we're going to be layering any of the jewellery we want to be silver in Ironbreaker. We're also going to be picking out any sharp edges of blades in Ironbreaker at this point. We're now going to apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade to any of the areas we want to be gold, bronze or worn iron. We're also going to use Nuln Oil to shade any of the areas of silver jewellery. If you've seen any of my previous videos, this next step probably won't come as much of a surprise, but I'm going to add some rust to the model. Using three successive washes slash glazes of Doombull Brown, Mournfang Brown and Scrag Brown. We want to drag this colour towards the recesses and build it up gradually. The metallics aren't quite finished yet, however I'm going to be applying a matte varnish and then continuing afterwards as matte varnishes do dull the metallics a bit. So to make sure they keep nice and shiny we'll be going to these next steps after we've applied the varnish of your choosing. Once the varnish is completely dried, we're going to layer back up on those areas with Ironbreaker for the silver and Retributor armor for the gold. We can now finish the metallics with either Vallejo model layer aluminium or Stormhost silver. We're going to use this to pick out the dots on the gold or the silver and also apply scratches and chipping to any of the darker iron. Much like the leather before it, really pick whichever colours you want for whichever bit of metal is on the model. If you want it to be gold, it can be gold. If you want it to be silver or iron, that's fine too. Keeping it random helps reinforce the ragtag nature of this band. I'm also going to be showing you the sidekick crew once again here, as I wanted to show that I used the Iron Warriors paint on the kind of plate armour. He's wearing to keep it a bit darker, along with his crew rifle. The grenades were painted with Balthazar gold, and then I added a verdigris effect with Sotec green and blue horror. This killbroker is now almost certainly the best dressed mercenary this side of the Cicatrix Maledictum. For the first time I've painted a Kroot, I'm pretty pleased with how they turned out, and I hope this video helps if you're doing the same. If there's anything you'd like to see in upcoming videos, or if there were things you particularly loved or hated about this one, please let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.